All right, hello, welcome. In today's video, I am going to look at loading images. Now this is going to be a little more of an SDL tutorial than a Rust tutorial, but I think it'll still be beneficial. Also, second disclaimer, these images aren't gonna to look too great. It's more a tutorial on how to do it rather than how to do it stylistically. With all that out of the way, for some reason, my file paths here are a little just hard to read. So I'm going to try to do my best to read out which things I'm opening. Why not make it a little bigger? Okay, so to start with, if you open up the GitHub repo and, and look inside there, you'll see that we have this image folder, IMG, and inside there we have this pieces.jpg file. And it's just a simple thing. I just whacked it off, got it off Google Images. It's got some pieces. I'm going to be using this top right and bottom left image for my, my pieces in my game. Okay. Now, the thing with SDL is the image module of SDL comes as an extra in addition to the full SDL framework. So we are going to need to modify a few things. We'll just go to cargo.toml and I'm doing this in Mac, in Windows it should be similar or there are things you can look up, um, but I'm just going to add in features, going to add image. We will have to modify something later on or I'll show you, but for now we've just got image. So I'll go to my main file. If we look down here at the main function, we've got all this stuff. We're initializing everything. Now, it's a bit of a stylistic question of how do we handle the images and state and everything. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, there's something called an image creator, which create, uh, sorry, texture creator, which creates textures. I'm going to pass that along to the, um, not the canvas, to the renderer's constructor. And I'm going to have the renderer store its image and then that's it we're done with the texture creator the um the renderer just uses that image that it's loaded hopefully that makes sense so what i'll do is i'll just go down here and i'll make a texture loader and there's a really cool thing just texture creator there we go as you can see this returns a texture creator struct great now I'm going to head over to the board view to handle that. So I'm going into the view folder, boardview.rs. Here we are, we're right up here. And I'm going to create a private variable called pieces, and that will be a texture. Now Rust is going to complain, and it's going to complain that texture cannot be found totally fine and it actually gives us a solution here um, it's imported as sdl2 render texture so i'll just pop in here great and now it's still complaining and it's complaining that it doesn't really have a lifetime parameter for texture so okay no problem what we can say is that we expect the texture to exist for some scope and that will match, whoops, that will match the scope of the struct. And so this is essentially saying that the texture is expected to exist for as long as this struct exists. Add further confusion, Rust now complains about code which was previously okay, and it complains that it doesn't, it doesn't really know what, how to match this up, so no problem. We can just go ahead, specify the lifetime there, and then Rust complains, I think I've talked about this before, I call this the Rust dance. And that's where you do something which you think makes sense, <clears throat> and it makes things break, and so you have to shuffle, you know, like references, you have to just randomly shuffle things around. Now, this seems to be working, and we can verify that we need to do this by deleting that life lifetime, and it complains. So yeah, we probably need that, and so there we have it. This is the... These functions are valid for lifetime A, and they refer to the renderer, which exists for lifetime A. I know that's strange. Hey, I didn't write the language. 
Okay, so what I want is I want to also take in another parameter, which I'll call texture loader, and we're going to borrow this. So this will be a So I'll just have to. Thankfully, the error messages are sometimes, sometimes useful. And in this case, they tell us how to import this stuff. So the thing is that the texture creator is bound to a window, is bound to a surface. And one way to think about that is that, well, if we were going to if we were going to load in textures that we could then copy onto a window surface, well, we need to know things like the pixel format of the window that we're copying to and stuff. And uh, beyond that, I'm, I'm not sure about the internals, but this, yeah, this canvas creates a texture creator and the texture creator is, is really scoped to the surface, to the canvas, if that makes sense. Now, now for the fun part. So we've got all this stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to load a texture. So that's img slash pieces.jpg. That's just the file that I'm after. And it pops this in and says, okay, yep, we've, we've done the thing. We're going to get a result. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Who knows? And now we can, we can use that here. So we can say uh, initialize the pieces sort of taking the result, and then the result will be an optional object. And so we can unwrap that, and that will give us the, the underlying real object, if that makes sense. So far, so good. And this is a lot of pain <laughs> to get to this point, but that's okay. I mean, in the background, planning this out and stuff. Anyway, so then we get down to drawing stuff, and we have right down here, draw pieces. So hopefully you can see we're looking through the board and the piece I'm really interested in is over here where we decide which color to draw. So what I'm going to do is remember all the pieces are on that image and so really we don't need to select the image. We can do that right now. We can say um, there we go. We've got the the image that we're after. But what we want to do is we want to select the region of the image that we're going to draw. So in order to do that, we could hard code some things, but I'm going to query the size of the image. So I'll, I'll get the image attributes. And that's done with this image query function. It pretty much fetches all attributes that we need. So if we were to look into this, we've got um, all this stuff. But the big thing is, is we can get the pixel format, we can get the height, the width. And so that's about it, I guess. Okay, no worries. So now let's, let's use that to make a rectangle. Okay, so if we were to look at the image, we want to start loading, like look at the black piece first, then if we see red, switch that to the red piece. So the black piece, its top left is down here. That's an X of zero and a Y of halfway across. And we're gonna, we're gonna do that sort of thing. So we'll say um, for the X, that will be zero. For the Y, that will be that bit. So take height, divide by two. For the width, well, okay, so we've got that. Now we've got an issue with y, and the problem is that we expect an integer here, but this is an unsigned integer. So what we can do is just the usual um, try into and that will just try to convert it appropriately. Whoops, wrong one. Mm. There we go, great. And what I'm gonna do is now, if I see that I need a red piece, I'm gonna 
change that rectangle so we're looking at a different region. Now, we're not going to have to change the width or height, they're going to stay the same. But we're going to have to change the X and Y. So if we see a red piece, we'll say, we'll set the X. And just set the, yeah, set the Y to zero. Now this should be complaining. Oh, hey, if it doesn't complain, let's leave it for now. Deal with it later. So, right. So this source rectangle is a region that we're going to be reading from the texture that we're trying to copy onto the screen. And likewise, I'm going to just get rid of that. Ah, now we complain. Okay, great. So clearly we can't set the Y coordinate or something unless this object is mutable. And so we'll just declare that it should be mutable and that should be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna change this to destination rectangle. This is the region on the screen screen that we are writing to. And this is fine. It worked for rectangles. So it's gonna work for images. So what we need to do is we'll go canvas, copy, and this will copy a texture to the canvas. We'll need the um, texture that we're copying and that will be image. Then we'll need this uh, source rectangle and then the destination rectangle. Then we'll go through the usual unwrapping. Okay, excellent. So I'm pretty happy with that again load the texture once, it has all the images we need, and the decision that we're making is as to the region of that image that we want to read from to put the different piece on the screen. Now just a little bit of housekeeping. So if we go back to this one, it says that we need the, yeah, the reference to the texture loader. I think that's it. Okay. Hopefully everything we've done so far will make sense. I'll just give this a go and check that it's running. Okay, so far so good. I click, it drops an image. I click, it drops another image. Another image. U to undo. R to redo. Okay, great. I'm happy with that. Now, if you're coming in from a blank project, and um, chances are you're going to have an issue here. It's going to give you an error, something like CC... Um, LD couldn't find um, t SDL image framework or something like that. So here's how you would fix that. Here we go. SDL2 image macOS framework. Got this bit by LazyFoo. But um, basically what we need to do is explicitly download the SDL image framework. So we have all of these bits. If you're a Windows user, you'll probably grab one of these. Windows zips. I'm a Mac user, so I'll grab this DMG, downloads that, we've already got it. And what we do is just click there to unzip it. And we have this STL2 image.framework. What you do is just copy that. So pretend that I copied and then open up your finder. And then right down the bottom here, we have this Macintosh, uh, Macintosh HD hard drive. And then in here, library, and then frameworks so pop into there and then you'd paste it there so you see here here i have my sdl2 framework and my sdl2 image framework now i've got that it should now be working for you anyway so there we have it that was just a quickie it's just a how to do it how to load images anyway have a great one and i'll see you again soon bye